Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Nicole Curtis, and I'm an art teacher with the Wayne Highlands School District in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. Today, I have two cool videos just showing you how to paint birch trees as well as forsythia branches with art supplies that I think that you can find around the house. I hope you enjoy the videos and I hope you stick around after to learn more about trees at three o'clock with nature. Um, they're going to be at Yosemite learning about the giant sequoias and climate change. So I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. Hey guys, I am going to do a video today and show you how to create these amazing birch trees and my fifth graders I know you've done this already, but it is a fan favorite and it's definitely my favorite um, thing that we do as far as painting because every single one of them is a masterpiece and it's fun for you to do with your family. I think they look cool hung together. Uh, so, you know, it's nice to be able to create something together and then uh, frame it together. So I'm gonna show you how to make these. We are gonna use some unconventional tools to create this, uh, which adds to the fun of it. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a blank piece of white paper. You can also use other things that are uh, white. Um, I used, I had um, a piece of board laying around, so I had, I painted it white first and then I masked it off. So I'll show you, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and all that we're going to do is we're just going to take some tape and you can use any kind of tape that you have. I happen to have masking tape. Uh, you could use like first aid tape, you could use scotch tape, duct tape, painter's tape, um, whatever you want. The idea is to mask off the area, uh, that you want to remain white for your birch trees. So I am going to rip off some tape here and some people like to cut it you know me I like the randomness of ripping it I did use a full sheet or a full piece for this first tree but I want this one to be a little bit narrower so I'm just gonna kind of tear some of this off and I like that it's not perfect but if you need perfection or you like things to have a straighter edge on them, you totally can use um, a pair of scissors to cut this. So, just gonna add that guy here. And then I'm just gonna add some more branches onto it. Now remember, when you're adding your branches, the narrower part of the branch would be further away from the trunk. So you want to make sure that you have it get narrower as it gets away from the trunk of the tree. And you can kind of scooch things over a little bit. You can also pull them off and put them back down. And that's the fun of using the tape because you can see you know, generally what it's going to look like before you commit to the shape of the branch or the, the size of the tree. So I'm just gonna add this extra little branch here. Okay. And then once I have my trees built with my teeth, I'm gonna color in the background. And the important part is just that the trees stay white and your background is a color. And you can use any color that you want. You don't have to use blue, certainly. Um, and you don't have to use paint. So on this one, I was just experimenting with, I have on this side over here, Mr. Sketch Markers. In the middle, I have crayon. And then on this side, I just have some oil pastels that um, you know I colored with. And the other cool thing is that you don't really have to be careful. You can just color over the top of it because we're just going to rip the tape off. So on um, this one, um, I'm going to use a little bit of 
just my food coloring. And so if you don't have paint, you could totally use food coloring. I was thinking too, with Easter, you could use the paints or the colored things that come for your Easter egg coloring in your Easter egg coloring kits. So that would work too. So I just have some blue and some green food coloring in here and I have a wet brush and I'm just gonna paint my background. So that's what the food coloring looks like. And I can add more blue in there if I want it to be more blue. that looks like. I like when it mixes on the page. So that's food coloring. It's fun, right? And again, I'm just coloring right over the top of my tape. I could also use watercolor paints. I have watercolor paints here. I'm a fan of these guys too. I take these with me when I go places because they travel really well. And these are just like those these are watercolor cakes or like temper cakes and we use those bigger ones at school. Um, and I think you could probably get these like at Walmart or even in the drugstore. So this is what the watercolor paint looks like compared to our food coloring. Food coloring actually has a lot more pigment, right? A lot more color in it. That's fun. I'm just painting right over the top of everything. So this is what the watercolor paint looks like. You could use a combination of things. Just experiment with it. It's really fun to just kind of see what kind of colors you get, the effects that you get. Um, on this one, this is the, this was watercolor paint too. And then on our board, I just used craft paint. So like these guys I have. Okay. So once you paint your whole background, then what you're gonna do is, and I'm gonna give this one a minute to dry. You're just gonna pull the tape off. And when you do that, it's just gonna reveal that white, beautiful birch tree that we're looking for. So, it rips your paper a little bit. It's okay. So I'm just gonna hold it down with my fingers as I'm pulling it up. And if it rips off some of the paper, I don't mind that. I actually kind of like it because it'll give my tree a little bit more texture when I go to add the black details onto my tree. So there's my beautiful tree and you can see it just by masking it, it leaves the white paper behind, which is amazing, right? So that's that one. Let's see how it looks on the board. So I'm just gonna pull this off the back and get it started. It's nice to have these little extra tabs on the back too because it gives you kind of like a little bit you can grab onto. So if you do have like a piece of board or even if you had a piece of cardboard laying around the house, the only thing you'd have to do first is you would have to paint it white first so that when you pull off the tape, you're gonna get that beautiful um, white background. Okay, let's see how this guy did. Now, I don't recommend pulling this off when it's still wet, but I want, I'd like to be able to finish this one for you guys, so let's see. Live life on the edge here. wasn't too bad so far. It is important that you kind of hold it close to where you're pulling the tape so that it doesn't tear. Looks pretty. Oop. All right, so it did grab onto my paper there. I don't know if you could see it. Let me show you. So it grabbed on here, and that happens a lot. 
So what I do is I'm just gonna grab it from the other end so it doesn't rip it all the way off. And I do have this little bit that's sticking up there. So I'm just gonna grab some Elmer's glue here and of course it's clogged. And I like to just put a little bit on my finger just so I could spread it really, really thin. And then I can just fix that and see. Can't even tell it was ripped. Okay. So now that I have my tray, now for the fun part. So not that that's fun, fun but <clears throat> what we're gonna use is we are gonna use a credit card, obviously not one that's you're still using. Um, you're gonna use, this is just like my rewards card for Michaels. <laughs> you could use a gift card, you could use like a hotel key, anything that is flexible, like this is plastic. And that is the key to adding the black, beautiful lines onto our birch trees, okay? So, I always have you guys practice first. So the key is I'm gonna use the narrower side of this card and I'm gonna get a little bit of paint on the edge of it. Practice on a scrap piece of paper first, okay? So I like to kind of do that. And then it is, it's a flick, it's not a drag. Because if you drag, you're gonna get stripes and that's not gonna look like a birch tree. Right, it'll end up looking like a zebra. Okay, so um, I want you to practice first and until you're comfortable with it. So I'm gonna get a little bit on my card here and then I'm just gonna, I like to kind of just make a little line like that and then I'm going to just flick it. And I'm gonna do the whole tree. And you can see I'm not adding any more paint on the here because if you have too too much paint on your card, it's just gonna be really dark. And you really can't fix it if you put too much black on there. So you can also kind of seesaw it sort of back and forth like that if you wanna add some branches, that's fun. I'm just making sure I don't have too much paint on my card and then I'm just flicking it. I'm kind of just going back and forth here. You can see what I'm doing. Yeah. It's hard to videotape this stuff without my cameraman. But So again, I'm just gonna get some black paint on my card. And the black paint, you know, you can make your own black and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a minute. If you don't have black paint, it's equal amounts of our primary colors. So as you are mixing it, you're gonna be paying attention. So if you mix up a black, that is kind of green then if you have the three primary colors you should know from our color mixing which color it's missing so if it's green we know that yellow and blue make green and the primary that's missing is red so you would just add in a little bit more red so you'll have to kind of just play with it a little bit it's hard to get it to be completely black, especially if you're using food coloring. But I'll show you. I got I got a color that's kind of close. So, so there's my birch trees. Again, this is the part that's tricky, but it's fun all at the same time because you get, you know, you get these random designs on this tree, and that's what makes it look like a real birch tree because we know that patterns in nature are what we call organic and, and just kind of random. So um, I did make some black paint here using um, food coloring. So I just mixed together 
red, yellow, and blue food coloring. And when I first mixed it, it was kind of like an orangey brown. So I added some more blue and then I kind of just had to go back and forth. And it's still, if you look at it in the bowl, it kind of looks brown, but on my paper, it, it really does, it does look black. So, um, have fun with this. I hope that you guys get some good results. I'm sure you will. Uh, share them on our Lakeside Art Room Facebook page, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Hey guys. So I thought it might be fun to just maybe do some videos. Um, maybe just show you how to do some stuff that we'd be doing if we were still at school. So I have these beautiful forsythia, if you can see them here, that we um, are forcing to bloom. So what that means is that they you know, they're not quite ready outside. So we cut some and we, um, you know, once they're in the house for a little bit and some water, because it's warm inside, it forces them to bloom a little bit early. So it's nice to do that. If you have some trees outside um, that are not quite ready to bloom, if you cut them and bring them inside, you're gonna have some nice color. So I'm gonna show you how to make this painting um, and it is of some forsythia and I know not everybody has art supplies at home so I've been kind of going through my cabinets and looking for some stuff that I thought that maybe you could find around the house if you don't have paint um, or markers or something else that you can use for some color so I tried first with some coffee and this was just coffee that we had left over from this morning and I did let it sit for a little bit. Um, and what I got was, was this. And it was fine, um, but I was trying to make it darker. So I went back into my cabinet and I found some food coloring. So you guys might have some food coloring in your cabinet that you've used for baking. Um, but when I got in there, I realized I only had yellow and blue, which is fine because I need it green, but we know that if we want to make brown, we need colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. So I need it red because I started with some green that I was using for the leaves on the forsythia. So I needed to find some red. So luckily I had some red gel icing um but you could probably use like red sugar i didn't have any red sugar but if you have anything that has red coloring in it you can try to mix red and green together to get brown that's my favorite brown you could also use purple and yellow or you could use blue and orange which are opposites um those complements on the color wheel make really nice browns all right so i'm gonna fold my paper in half so I get like a long piece of paper and this is just copy paper because guess what guys I ran out of drawing paper already so I need to order some more um so we're just using copy paper like from our printer because I got lots of that all right and we are going to use a straw um I know when we did our main vases we really liked using an eyedropper I don't happen to have an eyedropper at home so I'm gonna use a straw and it's it's kind of fun. So what I have here is this mixture of coffee. Um, and you can kind of see like the coffee grinds in there. And then I did use uh, yellow and blue food coloring to make green. And then I mixed in a bunch of red icing in here. And this is just like gel icing. I could probably use like regular icing. And then when I mix that together, I got this nice dark brown color. Okay, and you want it to be about this consistency so that when um, you drop it on the paper, you can actually move it around with the straw by blowing on it, okay? So, here we go. All right, so I am going to put 
a little spoonful of this brown mixture at the edge of my paper and I'm gonna blow. So I can move it with this straw. And I can I can have, you know, pretty good control with the straw, not as much as with the eyedropper. But I guess that's kind of the fun of it, right? Is that things in nature aren't perfect and we still get these kind of organic shapes that we want for the branches. On our forsythia. Okay, so there's a nice branch. You could see the whole thing here. Oh. Hi! I also forgot my little uh, easel for my phone at school that Mrs. Rickard got me. So I have my phone actually uh, rubber band it to a stick that's in a jar of markers right now. So that's what's happening. All right, so we're gonna make the beautiful flowers that are on the forsythia. And you can see here that they are, um, they have four petals. And they kind of have this green little throat inside of there. And then they also have this um, beautiful little green crown that kind of holds it onto the branch, okay? So we're gonna use a Q-tip. Um, you can also use, like we use for our main bases, you can use the end of a pencil or anything else that's round, really. You could use your finger. If you have a brush, you could totally use a brush. All right, so I have in this little bowl, just some yellow food coloring. And just put a couple drops in there. If you don't have yellow food coloring, you know, of course you can always use paint. Uh, you can find other things in your cabinet that are yellow. You could probably use like mustard or something. Um, I don't know. Look around, see what you come up with. Post it on our page and let us know if you figure something else out. So I'm just gonna make these little flowers here. So I can do some maybe that are kind of closed like that. I can do some that are just like a bud or I can do some that are totally open. Like that. So you're just gonna add as many flowers on the edges of your branches as you'd like. Just have fun with it. It's kind of cool to draw with the Q-tip. And then I did add some, I wanted to try to add some that were like on top of this branch. And if you're patient, unlike me, um, you can wait until your brown dries a little bit more, but to kind of get those right on top. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some green. So I'm almost out of green, so I'll just mix up a little bit more. So I'm gonna use um, just a little bit of blue, because we know blue is way stronger than the yellow, right? And I'm gonna use three drops of yellow to start, Let's see what we get. So three drops of yellow to one drop of blue. And that's really nice green. So play around with it, see what you like. It's a shade of green that I got. And then I'm gonna use another Q-tip to just kind of draw that green part <clears throat> that, you know, is the bud that opens up around the flower. And I 
attaches it to the branch. I just like to put like a little bit of green in the middle of my open flowers. Just for a little contrast. So, I mean this beautiful forsythia branch that we created with stuff that we just found around the house. So have fun, post your stuff on our page, and I miss you guys. I hope you're staying safe out there, and um, I hope that we see you soon. Take care.